I, I believe in the eternal spirit of the Messiah. And I believe in the Lord. I believe the Lord is an eternal spirit of a faithful human being and, and not a God. God is omniscient, omnipotent. Um, you know, if you guys understand your doctrine, and your doctrine is where you're getting your understanding of what you perceive as your faith. In the book of Genesis, it says there is no God but God, and God does not beget, nor is God begotten. God always is, always has been, and always will be. So your understanding of God is that the natural laws needed for an eternal existence through holy covenant reproduction okay, is God, the, the, the source. It's an infinite source. Okay, It's discussed in the book of Job, not to be contained and confined and tried to be explained by human frailty. Okay, That the soul is the essence of life that provides an eternal we, we share communications okay with one another eternally okay and faithful people okay are are like in spirit okay it says so in the Quran it says so in the Bible Adam Moses David Jesus John okay it says in the Bible that during the apocalypse that the one is the, the, the line of Adam, Moses, David, Jesus, John is called Lord. And it, it, there's a lot of evidence to point that his father's name is Ralph. And um, his mother's name is Mary. Okay. And then also in those rabbinic documents, Gabriel and Michael are mentioned in all the rabbinic, I, that I, the best of my knowledge, Gabriel and Michael are mentioned in the Torah. I know they're mentioned in the Book of Mormon. I know they're mentioned in the Quran. And I know they're mentioned, of course, obviously in the Bible. And um, uh, I have not read the Abrahamic Bible. Um, I've never been able to get a copy of it. Maybe I could look at stuff online. But uh, the CIA, Haile Selassie himself was recorded. Was people had said, you know, that he knew that the Abrahamic Bible that he wrote down was trained by covert operations. Okay. And because uh, it was the. 20th century and he could sit down and write down his revelation okay we all oh joseph smith's revelation was tampered with by the people that betrayed him all right because all the stories make sense historically when you line them up with uh, native americans and, and encounters between native americans and europeans okay so there's a lot of evidence to point you know and besides i'm not concerned about it. life is eternal grace is infinite all right and I was sitting there watching the little girls and the one little Jefferson girl talking about God. And <laughs> she's so cute. <laughs> I didn't lose my virginity. I willingly gave up my virginity to a, a, a track star in Wyoming who ended up getting pre pregnant by a professional basketball player and lost her scholarship. She um, would call me. I told her to call me collect because she had... Um, uh, she had... Uh, postpartum really bad and she had little voices in her head to go kill her baby little currington and every time i said every time you think that about currington i want you to get on the phone you call me collect and you call me my mom was pissed because that is this is 1980s guys 1984 or 85 and i had a 350 dollar phone bill in one month that's a lot of money back in 1980 but i had a job in 1984 or 85 but i told my mom why i did it and she wasn't mad at me she was upset. Then I told her what happened, and she went, "Oh my early bird," <laughs> and everything was all fine. Kind. I talked to her. I sat and talked to her. Everything's fine. I, I knew she was just. It was. She felt like her getting pregnant ruined her life. She had a full ride scholarship at the University of Wyoming. She got pregnant by a professional basketball player, and then she lost her scholarship. She was dating a professional basketball player who played for the. Uh, the, the, the Casper semi-pro team there and stuff. And she was trying to find a way to survive. Okay. And then when you watch this thing, I was watching this thing with Dayline with this Jude Jenks and this Mike, whatever thing, she went through a psychotic break because her trust had been betrayed because she found digital information that can be picked up and, and find ways through spy corporations to get it. So she had a phone and somehow he got stuff off her computer and her phone they probably shared an account and she had him in a thing and he found it and put it and looked at him okay he probably used them to take care of himself sexually because he didn't have anybody to be affectionate or sexual of and she had a psychotic break because she found it and she ended up killing him it was depressing and sad as hell 
sit and watch it and you're like, but there's no solutions offered by the people on television. They, this is a big break for investigators. They can go kiss you. Just forgive that and trespass and love one eternal faithful peace. We need more affection. We need more romance. We need marriages that are sacred and that can last. We don't need people getting together and using insurance companies to real build and rear those and offer food and lodging from millionaires to people that are their godfather because they use the word God incorrectly in sentences more times than you can shake a stick at. I'm not particularly concerned right now. The technology now is getting better. And I know I'm the main focus of the living word to linguistically correct genocidal operators worldwide. The, connect, the technology is connected worldwide. You know, the story of this guy, hotshot firefighter, and, you know, and he, he had to fight fires back in the day. And, you know, in the future, you know, we'll do controlled burns and we'll have things to protect people from fires and stuff. But the big thing is, is not to get yourself killed being a hero. If the house is going to get burned, get everybody out of there. We can always rebuild. We can't. Um, they, yeah, they can clone and they can do stem cell research and stuff like that. But stepping outside of nature... To try to play God with people's bodies because you're extremist and you're wacko. It promotes bad thinking, bad interaction. That's why you guys are aggressive, violent, selfish murderers and not holy, righteous people. And I hope the little girl's running the 100-yard dash because, like I said, I, I didn't lose my virginity. I, I willingly gave up my virginity, okay, to engage in sexual... Um, experience with that woman and I didn't go back because it felt too great <laughs> I knew I'd probably get her pregnant and we'd be in trouble because we were only 17 years old right and I hope those those young girls understand that when I watch I'm not critical of them because I know they're being abused by scientists in this community that are abusing me and it was fun to watch you run and <laughs> who knows how fast little Miss Richardson would have ran <laughs> If she hadn't showboated at the end, she was lucky that she wasn't Art Caswell, Steve Halucci back in the state finals. And uh, yeah, Art Caswell, he played with the Ra he played, he got a chance to play in the Raiders. And we were buddies in high school, and we talked about it on the phone when I was at Southwest Airlines. He goes, no, nah, man, I should have won, but I did the raise their arms, and Halucci did the lean, and he beat my ass. And his ass shouldn't have even been there. He was like, he was 19 years old when he was in it. It's not our fault we don't like showing up to class because it's stupid, <laughs> <laughs> I was like, you've been like that, Earl? Yeah, I was like, I know. <laughs> Shit was funny. No, me and Art and Kevin and me used to get along, but me and Art Caswell got along real well, okay? Because they, they knew how fast I was. Because, you know, when I ran at the thing, when they, I tried out for football, everybody was mad at me because they were like, why didn't you come out? Because the coach was an asshole to me. I told him to go fuck himself. I've done that like numerous times. <laughs> it's fuck you. I'm the Messiah. I'm not here to make millions of dollars. For pimps and madams, I ain't Heidi Fleiss's bitch. I'm the man that delivers the children from evil with the living embodiment of the Lord's Prayer. That's just me. Okay, I'm going to slow this up. Y'all know how much I love you. Okay. The Olympics, it's just for rocks and gox and box socks. And, you know, it's just for advertising and propaganda. It's Chuck Jones. It's, uh, it's, uh, Mel, Mel Blank. It's Dr. Seuss. And it's David Rockefeller. And uh, y'all trapped in hell until you submit to living the Lord's Prayer. Then take yourself back to the beginning, like Muhammad said, and go back to Psalms and back to the wisdom of Proverbs and live those perfectly faithful, grateful lives. All right. I'm going to load this up. It'll probably take about two hours to load, which means I'm up till almost mountain midnight. But I'll just fart around on my Wii with uh, uh, Eastern Washington, Montana, and Northern Arizona. Maybe I'll fuck with those Ivy League schools. I was fucking with uh, Yale and Harvard. Just to connect to the assholes to see if they're panicking or if they're going to change. We'll find out. No, I can make connections to people. It's weird the way I connect through technology. It's it's not normal. <laughs> Another thing these motherfuckers do is normal. They can't live the Lord's Prayer to save their own children's lives and their own egos. And they can't submit to the faith of the Psalms or live the wisdom of uh, Proverbs to help make love to women and have children uh, raised in heaven and not trapped in hell. <laughs> Nothing these people do is... You know what I'm saying? I love y'all, right? You'd hate to see where you'd be if out Navy Federal Academy. Our members are the mission. Make it your mission to live the Lord's Prayer, then uh, have the faith of Psalms and the wisdom of Proverbs. Make that your mission, okay? All right, peace.